Hi folks, Doc here. It's uh, kind of cold and crummy out here. Um, actually by the standards we've had lately, it's warm and balmy and maybe I should just slip into my bathing suit. <laughs> it's about 35 degrees for my American friends and uh, needless to say I'm not hanging around outside for very long. I just brought uh, Fugazi out of this shop after giving her the quick and dirty paint job treatment. I uh, figured I'd bring it out into the light, take a couple of pictures, and then head back inside to do a little bit of wiring. And there she is, looking a hell of a lot better than it did. Uh, it's not the greatest paint job on the planet, to be perfectly honest with you, I rushed it and I made some mistakes. I was fighting conditions and conditions weren't good. I may repaint it later, but for now I just wanted it not looking like the hell that it did. And I think I managed to accomplish that. Did that cool little black and yellow scheme sort of off the cuff. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for paint basically until I did it. I did the lettering on the hood myself. Uh, I basically printed out a stencil in my printer and cut that out, laid it on, shot it. So the basic build plan for Fugazi is going to be a rally mower. It's going to be quick, it's going to be reasonably lightweight, I'm not going to bulk it up with a ton of extra heavy crap. Um, it's going to be capable in multiple conditions, although probably not a shining star in any one of them. It's not going to be a mud mower, it's not going to be a rock crawler, it's not going to be a racer. It's going to be capable of going off-road quickly. Uh, as such, um, I've already swapped in the Vanguard V-Twin. I'm going to be putting in a Peerless 820 transaxle. I'm going to be putting better tires on it. Um, probably a front bumper that's capable of withstanding a little bit of impact. Um, LED headlights, those are coming soon. Um, just so that I can see in, uh, in you know less than really bright trail conditions. And not a hell of a lot else. So with that, the wiring is going to be simple. So for anybody that's building up a lawn tractor to be a mud mower or a rally machine or anything like that that wants to keep their wiring simple, this video may be for you. Okay, so I've got three basic elements going into this system here. Uh, in no particular order, uh, since my starter relay was bad, I've got another one here that I just dug out of my parts box and this is just a three pole unit. There's three pole units and four pole units. Um, if you watched my video on relays, it explains the difference between the two, but just you know, keeping it really, really short here. Uh, one of them is chassis grounded, and one of them is not. The three pole is chassis grounded, so when this gets bolted down, that makes the ground connection for the trigger call. So I'm going to be replacing the starter relay, and I've got a push button switch here. These things are commonly available all over the place. I got this one from Princess Auto for a few bucks, and it's got a nice little rubber cap on it that will hopefully keep the elements out. Last order of business is this toggle switch, and as I flip this over, you're going to see it's got a buttload of connections on it. And this is how I'm going to help keep the wiring simple on my machine, uh, eliminating multiple switches and just basically making it so that when I switch the system on, everything is on, and when I switch the system off, everything is off. One switch, uh, multiple contacts, so this is a four pole single throw switch. So this can actually switch four circuits at the same time. So I'll be hooking this up so that it operates the kill and it also enables or disables the start. Uh, some systems that I've seen done up with a toggle switch and, uh, and a push button, um, you're capable of cranking it in the off position, which seems to me a little bit silly. So this will have it so that when the switch is off, you can't crank the engine over. When the switch is on, you can. Um, and this can also master my lights and give me room for one more circuit. I'm not sure what that'll be yet. But when you shut it off, it'll shut the engine off. It'll disable the start circuit. It'll kill the master for the lights so that you can't accidentally leave the lights on all in one. All right, so there you go. There's the factory wiring disaster and the relay. And uh, I'm just going to start stripping that stuff out because I'm basically starting okay. over. Okay, I'll spare you all the gory details of the rip out. But I've basically pulled the last of the factory wiring out. There's a couple of little bits and pieces that I still need to pull out. But I'll just show you inside the cavity here. 
and uh, I've left obviously the two main power cables that come from the battery and go to the starter on the engine. It's worth noting that of course I uh, disconnected the battery first, which you must do. Okay, so this little cavity is pretty awkward to film in. But what I did is I sanded down the spot where the relay mounts to the bottom plate in there. And I sanded down the mounting plate on the relay. Give myself some nice clean contact area. And I applied a coat of dielectric grease to the area just to provide a little additional protection. And now I'm working on trying to get these terminals back on, which is not going particularly well. <laughs> Anyways, I'm reconnecting the high current leads to the starter relay. And uh, I'll point out once again, uh, just in case anybody's not clear, it does not matter which lead goes on which side. Uh, the one for the battery and the one going to the starter can go on either side of the relay. The relay is blind to which side is which. It absolutely does not matter. Okay, so looking at the board here, these are the connections that we're making for the starting circuit. Um, coming off the positive of the battery, we're going to a 5 amp fuse to protect the circuit. From there, we're going to the toggle switch, and the reason for that again is so that you can't crank the engine with the you know, switch in the off position. From there, we're going to the start button, and then the small terminal on the relay. Okay, so looking at the relay again, or trying to if the camera will focus, the big wire on the left is the one that comes from the tractor's battery. Uh, so that side is always hot, and that's where we're going to take our positive lead for the starter system. Here I have a selection of blade style automotive fuses. And uh, I used to buy fuse holders all the time, and uh, it just turned out to be kind of pointless. Because uh, these quick connect male terminals fit on there pretty good. So I put two on there, there's my fuse holder, and I just wrap a little electrical tape or what have you around that just so that it can't short out against anything, and poof, there's a fuse holder. Uh, that you didn't have to buy. So that's what I'm going to do. So this is going to go on to the hot side of the starter relay and again make sure the battery is disconnected remains disconnected. Okay so now we've attached our 14 inches or whatever it is of wire to the on off switch and you've seen that I've gone to a center terminal here. Now the way I want you to understand this is if you can picture this handle going all the way through when this handle is in the up position the contact is between a center lug and a lower lug. When that's in that position, you get a contact like this between the center lug and an upper lug. So we want this thing with the switch in this position to be able to crank the engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach this terminal here uh, going to the push button. So we're going to cut off another four or five inches of wire because they're going to be close on the dashboard to each other. Uh, with a quick connect female on one end and a ring terminal on the other end for the push button. Okay, so here's the assembly so far. Into the switch from the fuse, out to the button, and then from the button we need another length of wire to go back to the solenoid. And there we go. I put a ring terminal on either end so that I connect to the button and back to the small lug on the solenoid. Once again, I am going to wind up taking all this stuff out again, but I kind of wanted to show it to you in place here. Um, just make sure I've got enough room to get my hands in there. I've left the switch in the on position so I know which way to orient it for on when I get to where I gotta go. Just gonna kind of loosely stick that there and feel around to wherever the button landed. There it is. And feed it up through the hole. Put the cover back on. So that's the switch in the off position, that's the on position, that would be able to start the engine, and that would not. Uh, and then the only thing we have left to do is make the termination on the solenoid. Okay, so here's the kind of industrial view of things. Uh, as you can see, I've wrapped the terminations on the fuse with electrical tape to keep anything from shorting out. And 
there's the connection on the solenoid right there and the connection to the hot side right there for the power supply so if everything is correct I have by the way temporarily reattached the battery but if everything is correct nothing should happen when I push the starter button until I kick the switch on perfect okay with the starting circuit out of the way this is what remains uh, we basically have to take the kill terminal on the engine and I'll show you that in a minute run it through that same on off switch toggle switch in the dashboard the other side of the switch goes to ground and that's what grounds out the primaries on the coils to shut the engine off now the engine also has two charge wires going to the regulator rectifier on my charging circuit <clears throat> yours might be a little bit different but the application is the same coming out of that regulator is the charge wire and the charge wire we're just going to take to the you know constant battery lead on the relay all right so looking at my vanguard engine this is what you need to see for the next couple of steps here this little terminal here is the kill terminal and we need to take that to the toggle switch and then to a ground to shut the engine off when we turn the switch off this is the regulator rectifier and of course normally this would have been connected to the factory wiring harness already but since i swatched, swapped engines on this i haven't done that yet so it's not a lot of wire here i'm gonna have to work carefully but i'm gonna clip this terminal off and uh, put a more appropriate connector on it that i can work with a quick connect and uh, run that over to the solenoid Okay, so hoping you can see I've got everything going on in here. There's a couple of holes in the side of the dash up right here that aren't doing anything at the moment. Um, so what I did is I took a piece of sandpaper and I sanded the hell out of the inside of this hole on the back side. And that's where I'm going to connect my ground. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to take this ring terminal and a nut. Just kind of hold it back here. Kind of position everything where I'm going to want it. Give that a little bit of help. That's going to go to the switch. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to pull the switch down and make some connections at the switch. Um, over here on the engine, I've got a stud. Now it does have a quick connect terminal on it, but I chose to use the ring terminal, a little more reliable. So I'm just going to put that on there. It's going to not cooperate with me. Get in there. Thank you. And I'll snug that down in a moment and just basically run this wire up to the switch as well. So for my next move, I'm going to have to pull the switch down and, uh, going to have to pull the push button down as well because as you recall there's some short leads going from the one to the other and I'll see if I can get these out far enough that you can see what's going on and it really depends on how much wire I've got available this is where things start to get a little silly yeah it turns out I don't have enough wire to go that way <clears throat> so I'll bring the stuff down here can you see that oh, I've got to hold it up a little bit to get it in view so what I'm going to have to do is, you remember over here, we went with these two terminals so that when the switch is on, it's got power to the start circuit. With the switch off, we want it to ground out. So we're going to grab the next row of terminals here, and we're going to connect again to the center terminal, but this time to the upper terminal. So that when the switch is in the on position, there is no continuity between these terminals. When the switch is in the off position, that's when it grounds out and kills. So that's where we need to make our connection for the kill switch is the center terminal and one of these upper ones. So I'm just going to work on trying to get this wire fed through there. This is the one coming from the engine. So we'll go to that center terminal we were discussing. And then from the ground, wherever that went, in there somewhere, I know it is, I left it there. Oh, there it is. And I lost it again. <laughs> Come on, damn it. There we go. All right, found it there. All right, so for that, we're going to make that connection here. Now I can put these into place and actually tighten them down. All right, 
So I cut myself a piece of 12 gauge wire and put the appropriate quick connects on there and I decided instead of wrapping it with electrical tape I'm going to use a little heat shrink tube. Just slide that on there and get the torch. This is way too much torch for this job by the way. Very easy to set fire to something with that much torch. Anyways, that's good, and uh, I've just run this down underneath. I'm going to follow the uh, follow the fuse line and the choke cable and all that stuff. And uh, <clears throat> down here and inside, uh, you can't even see it yet. <laughs> down here and inside, I've got the terminal just laying here, and I'll connect that on later. Okay, so now we're getting into moment of truth territory before I finish stitching everything up, including zip tying wires and closing off the access panel and all that. Uh, so in order for this thing to be successful, um, obviously it needs to not crank with the switch off, crank with the switch on, start and run with the switch on, and shut off with the switch off. Switch on. All right, that's a win. The other thing I want to do is verify that the charging system is working. Um, so I've got a multimeter on it. And we just want to make sure that there's a voltage increase after I start the engine. takes it uh, as far as I need to take it today. That's your basic wiring. I have only one thing left to address with regards to wiring on this machine, um, as of this point anyways, and that's some headlights. I'm going to be doing an LED headlight install very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but in the meantime, that's your basic starting charging and kill circuits um, that can be applied to not only, you know, any Murray Widebody, but pretty much any lawn tractor, because they all boil down to the same thing anyways, really, when it comes down to it. You know, some of the connections may look a little different. You may have an unregulated charging system. But at the end of the day, it, it all parlays down to the same thing. So that is your very, very basic, simplified wiring uh, for any off-road modified lawn tractor. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Sprockets Garage on YouTube. And until next time, take care of yourself. Yeah.